This is the new Sony FX9, Sony's new full-frame, fast hybrid autofocus, dual ISO, low-light capable camera. Cinema 5D at IBC 2019 is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Music Vine, beautifully produced music for film and video. Cartoni, supports your vision. And Fujinon, ultimate optical performance. Hi, my name is Nino Leitner and this is Cinema 5D. Today, Sony officially presented its new Sony FX9 camera. Alongside a handful of industry colleagues from all over Europe, I was lucky enough to be invited to a presentation and hands-on shooting with the FX9 in London. There I also shot an interview with one of the lead developers of the camera, Yasua Ueda-san. You can watch the interview by clicking this link here. Now before I share my impressions with the Sony FX9, let me give you a little bit of background. The Sony FS7 has been my personal main camera for the past five years since it came out. I shoot a lot of documentaries, commercials and corporate stuff with it and actually I invested in a second one three years after it came out because it was so incredibly popular. At least here in Europe the FS7 is everywhere. It's the most used Super 35mm camera in normal day-to-day -day productions. During these full five years that the Sony FS7 has been out, there's really only been one small update to the camera, which was the FS7 Mark II, which really only introduced a variable electronic ND filter to the camera. Other than that, Sony really rode on the success of the FS7, so it really was time for something new. As you will see, the Sony FX9 really builds on the FS7 success. If you want, you could really call it an FS7 on steroids. 11 years ago, the Canon 5D Mark II was introduced and what followed was of course a filmmaking revolution. For the first time, it was possible to create cinematic images from an inexpensive camera with a large full-frame 35mm sensor. Shortly thereafter, Cinema5D.com was founded as the forum and news site for all those things relating to DSLR filmmaking and helping you guys find your way around this new world. It took a lot of time, but after all those years, finally the big camera manufacturers have jumped onto the full-frame bandwagon when it comes to cinema cameras. Finally, they're giving us a full-frame sensor in all those professional filmmaking cameras. Sony has started with the Sony Venice, which has, of course, a 3x2 full-frame sensor. And now, finally, we have a lower-end professional cinema camera, the FX9, with a 17x9 full-frame sensor. Now what's really noteworthy is that the Sony FX9 has a 6K sensor, but right now you can't actually record those 6K, only 4K. They're downsampling the 6K sensor for a very, very crisp 4K recording. Sony says that actually gives them an increased sensitivity with the bigger photo sites and also a better capability of having a better autofocus, which I will talk about a little bit later. Sony is using a new sensor in the FX9 called Exmor R, but it's not the same one used in the Venice. However, the camera shares the same dual ISO with the Venice at 800 and 4000 ISO. Internally, the FX9 uses the same codecs as the FS7, XAVC Intra 10-bit 422 and up to 4K. On top of that, the new extension unit will of course share all the features from the old XDCA FS7 extension unit. The up to 16-bit RAW output from the XDCA unit will be via one SDI cable again. Unfortunately, only in up to 4K right now. When asking the developers about why that is and why they're not offering 6K output, they said that they will consider it in a future firmware update. At the start, the camera will only have 16x9 aspect ratios built in. UHD 4K and 1080p HD. 4K and 2K DCI in 17x9 aspect ratios as well as a 5K crop mode, which of course will only be able to be recorded in 4K internally, uh, will be added with a firmware update later on. In terms of frame rates, the camera can use its full 6K full frame sensor with up to 30p, of course only recorded in 4K. When you switch to a 5K crop mode, you can record up to 60p, again recorded in 4K of course, and there's also a Super 35 crop mode which can be recorded in 60p. With a future firmware update, this Super 35 crop mode will also be able to do 120 frames per second. I think that eventually this camera will be able to do the same full frame rates that the FS7 is doing right now, which is up to 180 frames per second. Here are some test clips from the full frame 6K mode downsampled to 4K. Here's the full frame 6K mode downsampled to 1080p. And here you can see the S35 crop in 4K and the S35 crop in 1080p. 
you can see that there is still significant moray in the S35 crop mode in 1080p. But the developers from Sony assured me that all those modes are not final yet and this will be much much better in the final camera. All the images filmed on the FX9 that you can see here were filmed in a new picture profile called S Cinetone, which is aimed to reproduce skin tones really nicely. Sony introduced a new color science with the Venice and then also this was carried on to the FS5 Mark II and for the first time now we have Sony cameras that produce really nice looking skin tones out of the box. And at the same time they are maintaining the full latitude of the sensor, at least it seems like that. I can see this being used on most TV productions in the future where there is little time to actually do proper grading from an S-Log image. And I really like the way the skin tones look from this camera. Apart from the full frame look of the bigger sensor, which of course also brings shallower depth of field and the ability to do wider shots, the other big innovation in the FX9 is the dual base ISO of 800 and 4000 ISO. Now the FS7 was decent in low light, but it wasn't really great. But the FX9 completely changes that. When you switch that camera to the base high ISO of 4000, you can ramp it up up to 12800 ISO. I did try that mode and while it's not completely noise free of course, it's still absolutely usable for most productions in TV. Finally we have an F-series camera from Sony that is as low light capable as some of the alpha cameras in Sony's lineup, particularly the A7 series. Of course the king is still the A7S II when it comes to low light. The FX9 is the first camera to have an electronic variable ND filter on a full frame sensor with all the same features we already know from the FS7 Mark II and also the FS5 cameras. The camera does not have IBIS, the mechanical in-body image stabilization, because it seems like this is impossible to combine with a built-in ND filter. However, the FX9 has a gyro and it records movements as metadata, which is saved onto the clips directly. This metadata can be used in post to stabilize the footage electronically using Sony's own Catalyst software. Sony is also working with the makers of other editing platforms to support this metadata in the future. And now let's tackle one of the most important innovations in the Sony FX9, the fast hybrid autofocus. This is comparable to Canon's dual pixel autofocus and it also works really, really well in the Sony FX9. I was really surprised. Now the FS7 didn't have a great autofocus, it was only contrast based. Now we have something that is contrast based and also face detection based, both combined. It works really smoothly and it is fast. And what's particularly impressive is the face detection autofocus. It sees all the faces in your shot and you can, with face registration, register one of the faces and the camera and the autofocus will lock onto that face, no matter how that person uh, moves through the frame. I tried having them actually leave the frame for a brief second and then come back and it will still recognize that face and keep them locked on. That is really, really seriously impressive. I also really didn't make it easy for the autofocus. I was shooting mostly at f1.8 with a new Sony 35mm lens and I would say it kept focus 90% of all time. That is almost as good as a professional focus puller. Now I'm not saying that you know this would replace a professional focus puller but this goes out to all the naysayers who say that you know autofocus has no place in the cinema world. Times are really changing and I think people need to adapt. What's a little bit cumbersome is that the FX9 still comes with a very similar screen to the FS7, which is not a touch screen. It's not like I absolutely need a touch screen, but as soon as you're using autofocus for something like face detection, it would be very, very useful, like Canon does it on their new C500 Mark II, where you can simply tap on a face and it will stay locked on. With the Sony FX9, you actually have to shuffle through the faces that you see in your shot with a joystick on your handle and then tap on one to register that face. It just takes a lot of time and sometimes this might not be fast enough. So I hope that Sony will introduce an optional touchscreen for the camera in the future. Now let's quickly move on to the outside of the camera but stay with the sensor for a little bit. Now this camera still uses the E-mount lever lock type mount uh, of the E-mount uh, which they already introduced with the FS7 Mark II. I'm not a big fan of the lever lock type mount simply because it actually prevents you from replacing a lens alone when you have your camera on the shoulder with one hand. You need both of your hands to actually take a lens off and if you try it with one hand you will drop the lens. This is very very dangerous. But still it provides a better protection for the camera mount than the original E-mount of course. 
The advantage of the E-mount, of course, is the short flange distance, which means that you can adapt practically any lens onto the E-mount, which still is a huge plus of this technology. A nice welcome addition to the internal connectors of the FX9 is the inclusion of timecode and genlock ports in the body of the camera itself. That means that we don't necessarily need the XDCA unit for timecode anymore, like it was the case with the FS7. The FX9 has Wi-Fi image transmission built right into the camera. That means that you can use your smartphone with a dedicated Sony app and watch the image with about a one second delay live stream from your camera. And you can control the camera functions with it too. Now, as you can see, the FX9 looks very, very similar to the FS7. It's just a little bit longer, but that also means it lives better on your shoulder than the FS7, but it makes it even harder to put it on a gimbal. Please note that the final finish of the production version of this camera will be gray. We had only one gray camera with us when we had the test shoot. There were three other models which were actually black and looked much more like an FS7, but there will be no black version of that camera in the market. Unfortunately, Sony decided to stick with the same loop design that they used on the FS7 series already. I think this loop is too long and it actually creates a problem if you use lenses of a certain length because the center of gravity on your shoulder will be off with that very long loop. Now the handle also looks the same as the one from the FS7 Mark II. It's okay, but I would have liked to see something like the quick release uh, technology that Shape is using for their FS7 handle. On the handle, they added a grip belt, which of course is very useful because the camera will simply be more secure in your hand. You can see that there are a lot of buttons on the side of the FX9. Most noteworthy addition over the FS7 series are the two additional audio wheels that you have there. With these two wheels, you can control channel three and four, which probably by default will also be set to the internal microphone again, but you can switch that to external audio as well. Sony also released a new series of UWPD audio devices recently, and they also, like before, communicate through the smart hot shoe. Now, the new thing is that now a full digital transmission is maintained. Never ever goes the signal to analog or back to digital again. It's digital from the start to the end, which actually results in better audio quality overall. In addition to the camera itself, Sony announced a new CinemaLens series for E-mount, which is supposed to combine the precise manual focusing from cinema lenses with the advanced autofocus capabilities of the new camera. The first lens will be a 16-35 T3.1 lens, which will be released in spring next year. So let me summarize. Sony claims that the FX9 is not a successor to the FS7, but to me it clearly feels like one. They clearly built on the success of the FS7 series and spec'd it up as much as possible. At a suggested retail price of 11,000 euros with availability in December already, I'm sure it will find its market. The 4,000 euro price difference to the Canon C500 Mark II will really forgive the fact that Sony could have been a little bit more bold in redesigning the concept from the FS7 to the FX9. Nevertheless, the really great autofocus that's really ready for prime time cinema production and also the full frame sensor look combined with the S Cinetone, all of this I think will make sure that this camera will find its way into professional productions worldwide. Thanks for watching, this is Cinema 5D and please stay tuned to our channel for a lot more videos from IBC 2019 and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.